for the Lord Jesus, a wonderful round of applause. Beloved brethren, we are here in the presence of our Lord God, this truly powerful, wonderful, and beautiful God we follow, and who gave us many messages before the meeting started. I was talking to the people here about John chapter 15, verse number 14. This declaration made by Jesus is in the conditional tense. And we must be very attentive to the verb tense Jesus uses because that's how we will know if he refers to something that happened is happening or will happen. Jesus said, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Pay close attention to this word. It's not enough to say, I am friends with Jesus. Well, I could actually say I'm friends with President Obama. I can say I'm friends with anyone, anyone at all. But are they truly my friends? What really matters is that you are truly friends with Jesus and you feel it in your heart. Is it possible for me to say that I'm your friend, Dr. Suarez? Yes, of course. But some people wouldn't like that. I mean, they don't like the gospel. They don't like it when I preach the truth. I don't want to be friends with Dr. Suarez, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to love them and keep praying so that these people have their eyes open to the truth. Now, this is how things works with Jesus. If I follow his commands and what does he command me to do? Well, we have to find out. I have to seek him. Lord, please talk to me. Please tell me what to do. Please show me. So when you do everything Jesus commands you, and Jesus will speak to your heart, and if he doesn't, you shouldn't feel guilty about it. Don't keep thinking, what's wrong with me? If eventually Jesus doesn't talk to you, so I must know what Jesus wants, and I must do what he wants. This is true for everyone. It doesn't help to pray, Lord, I'll do it eventually, and days pass and nothing happens. No, no. If God wants it, then I'll step up and I'll do as he commands. I'm not talking only about the ministry here, but every Christian businessman should also be an evangelist. Artists should be evangelists. Soccer players should be evangelists. Everyone should be an evangelist and show whatever God wants. Then you will be true friends with Jesus. My brethren, being friends with the King of Kings, the Lord of the Lord, someone who can never be bribed, someone who has no evil in his heart, and who said that whatever you ask in his name that he will do is the best thing that could ever happen to you. Amen? Now please open your Bibles to the second epistle of Peter, chapter 1. The second epistle of Peter, chapter 1, verse number 10. This passage gives us very important instructions. Unless we learn something from God, we are stagnant. We sit and wait for God to do everything. I'll wait for the day God confirms it so that I can be blessed. Brethren, if God has called you, you should reassure yourself and be steady and not God. Let's read what Peter wrote here. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. That is, the call from God and him electing us. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. That's God's advice. You and me, we have been called by God. It's God's calling. We feel the desire to belong to Jesus. And we accept Jesus. For many are called, but few chosen. We have been chosen. We have been elected. So we have to follow that calling. Dr. Suarez, but what have we been elected for? We've been elected to take part in the blessing that Jesus conquered for us so that we could walk in the good works which God prepared beforehand so that, brethren, we should walk in them. Therefore, if we are more diligent to make your call, as it's written here in the Bible, therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. Every time you think about the Lord God when you wake up in the morning, if you... Are, are, are going to make a decision, think I have to be even more diligent to make my call and election sure. And how do I do this? God has called me to take part in the good works of God. Therefore, I'm here to take part in them. And why did God call me? He called me so that I could be elected. I've been elected. Now I've been authorized to use the holy name of the Lord Jesus. I don't need to keep asking God, Lord, will you allow me to use your name? You see, God's gifts are irrevocable. Whatever you ask, which means to require and determine in my name that I will do. Therefore, if evil is coming my way, God, I'm going to use your authority. That's how I talk to God. But I didn't even need to say that. I can say in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. I don't accept you. I have to be even more diligent to make my call. That is my calling, my vocation and election sure. However, if I do this, what will happen then? Many great things will happen for I will never stumble again. 
Any obstacles in my way created by whatever enemy I rebuke will immediately cease existing. I can carry on, keep on going, following my path. And as I do this, I will never stumble again. I will never have any problems that cannot be solved. I will win any and every battle. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. But that's not all. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the moment that I am even more diligent to make my call sure, that is more effective, more truthful, you have to pay attention. Because just saying that you've been forgiven and that your heart is filled with grief or, or resentment or sins, that's a lie. If I have been forgiven and there's something wrong with me, I will get rid of that in the name of Jesus. I am going to observe what the Word of God commands. I will never follow the lusts of the flesh or the desires of the flesh. But why not? Because I have decided to accept Jesus. Those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Now what will happen if I am even more diligent to make my call and election sure? Let's go back to Peter. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every time, more and more, this entrance that I have will be abundantly supplied to me. Therefore, if I need any help, guide, I need your help right now. I have any given problem, but my faith says that I can solve this in the name of Jesus. Later on, I will certainly praise the Lord, but at this moment, all I'm going to say is in the name of Jesus, I bind you now, I cast you out, I rebuke you now. Leave immediately in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you very much, and the work is done. Therefore, one thing leads to another. And it says here in the Bible, For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But Dr. Suarez, it seems like you repeat the same thing. But listen to what Paul says here and tell me if I'm not just like him. And do as he says. Verse number 12. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things. People can be forgetful, brethren. If you want to be a truly successful person in the presence of the Lord God, always remind people of what's written in the Holy Bible. Jesus told us, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Therefore, follow what I've taught you. Keep an eye out. Don't let anyone take that away. Sometimes we forget all about that and then we say, Lord, please give me a word. But he has already given us so many words. Is that one still active? God's gift is irrevocable. Any revelation that God gives you at any given time will never ever be taken away from you. It will work at any time. It's just perfect. The Word of God never grows old. The Word of God never grows weak. The Word of God never takes time out. The Word of God never sleeps. The Word of God has got Himself in your life. You should use whatever you have learned. But if we, who are believers, do not remind each other of what the Word says, people will just forget it. Let's go back to Peter. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things though you know and are established in the present truth. So brethren, what this means is, even if you know it, it can sink into oblivion. We have places here in our brain where we store things and then we forget about them. You don't bring the word with yourself. In the Old Testament, the Lord God instructed the people to write and put those words right before their eyes so they would remember. And then God told them to set their hearts and their children hearts on those words when sitting at the table and their parents repeating them because there's so much information, so many things to learn. And then the person forgets about these things. And the next thing they know, they've forgotten the word of God and they behave just as those who don't believe in him. They will do exactly the same things. And sometimes they even stumble in their faith. But don't you belong to Jesus? Once I was talking to this person who used to work here at the church and this person claimed to belong to Jesus. And I had an inspiration that actually got me thinking. I said, Jose, what's the difference between you and someone who receives the devil? Oh, it's huge. They belong to the devil and I belong to God. And he had just come from the doctor's office. And of course, I'm not against that. Jesus said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. If you pray and it doesn't work because you don't believe in God, then go to the doctor so that your life is saved and your problem can be solved. 
So I said to him, well, you went to the doctor today. Let's do some role playing. You sit down and there comes a person with lots of amulets around their neck. Then you say something to them and they tell you something back. Then you finally say, well, I'm going to evangelize them. First of all, you will ask them what's wrong with you. Well, I've been sick. I'm not sure what's wrong. I came here so that the doctor could help me because I think my life is just completely hopeless. And then you take advantage of that. Oh, I'm glad you said that because I belong to Jesus. And I know what the word of God says, that Jesus heals and delivers and so on and so forth. And you bring some faith to the heart of that person. What do you believe in? And the person says, well, I belong to the devil. What about you? You know, talking to me. Well, I belong to Jesus. I can see that because you're speaking of him. And what are you doing here? Well, I'm just like you. <laughs> Why are you telling me these things? <laughs> what do you want me to do? You want me to believe what you say, but don't believe what you believe? I mean, if you believe these things, you would have been delivered. How can you say that I'm going to be delivered? We have to think about these things. But wait a minute. Why is it that I'm stumbling? But let's go back to that, that verse number 10. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. Never. Therefore, everything comes down to this question. Do I belong to God? Yes. Am I going to take possession of the blessing? Yes. I am in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray now? God, thank you very much for the things you tell us for what you tell us, for what you teach us, for all the things that will never change, my dear Lord, for it's a gift from you. And when we have your gifts, my Lord, we don't ever need to fear the threats that come from the enemy by any means, my Lord. You just taught us what we should do. We have to be even more diligent to make our call and election sure. Father, I'm sure you didn't call me here to be an embarrassment in your kingdom. You have called me to be your friend, to do the things you command. And God, this is what I want to do. In your word, you say, do not give place to the devil. So I cannot give place to the devil. But if I tolerate disbelief and negative thoughts, if I tolerate dirty, immoral thoughts and evil temptations, then I'm giving place to the devil. And Lord, if I give place to the devil, then I'm not going anywhere. But Father, I want to be more diligent. This person is praying and saying, I want to be more diligent. Lord, I am interceding together with these lives now. And even though these people have made many mistakes, they are saying, not today. Today I want to walk with the Lord God. Father, I am going to use the authority you have given me. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I paralyze any and every action by the devil in these lives from the crown of the head to the soles of their feet. And I say, go away now, leave here. Stop oppressing the life of this person. Your work is now over because I'm binding you, evil spirit. So release this person and leave. Disappear and take with you everything that is yours. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you very much. And may your spirit come down upon these lives and bless them all now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brethren. Now let's go to the real life drama for today. Some time ago, I was having too much headache. So I had some tests and a small circle appeared in my brain. I had a really strong headache in the left side of my brain. After some time, I was at work and I felt very sick, so I had to rush to the hospital. Then I had to go through an MRI to find out that I had a tumor, a tumor in my brain. The moment he found out about it, he changed a lot, you know? The disease caused him to, to become a bit weaker. According to the doctor, the best solution would be to have a, have a surgery when they came. Um, when the nurses came to my room asking me to take a shower and change my clothes to go to the operating room, it was 
very hard, you know. We thought the worst could happen because we knew I had a tumor that was very difficult to operate. The next day, the doctor came into my room and gave me some very unpleasant news. He wasn't able to do what he had planned. He said that the tumor was too deep in my brain. And he said it was like searching for a lake in the middle of a huge forest. The tumor could not be removed because it was too deep. And since he was a, a very renowned doctor, I must say we ended up relying and trusting more in the doctor. And then at that moment, the doctor discharged me and we had to follow the progress of the disease every six months doing MRIs and taking medications. In the meanwhile, Delidia watches the faith show and starts to learn about the word of God. That's when she starts going to the Grace of God Church. There was this moment when I stopped and thought I was alone at home, you know. Then I thought to myself, if God does so many great things for other people, why won't he help us too? And if God does that, I want to see with my own eyes. So I started seeking the Lord. The moment I set foot in the church, I actually felt more confident about everything. Every campaign I would take part in, you know, the first thing I would think about was that. And then we kept doing the follow-up for about two more years, actually. And in the MRI, the doctors thought the brain tumor had grown inside my brain. And he decided that I should stay in the hospital and have another surgery. I completely relied on God. I knew that God could start working at any time now. And I would always tell him, just think about God. And the second time I was there, I actually had two surgeries. And the doctor failed to remove the tumor during both of them. And he told my wife, only my wife, that my case was very serious. That's when he decided to go to the church. Pastor Mike had just arrived at church and he interceded with me with a strong prayer. Then I kept going and going and eventually became a sponsor. Because I often watched the, the face show with my wife, I saw a lot of cure going on. So I started to feel happier. One year later, I was still a sponsor. I kept going and going. And the doctor asked for another MRI planning to admit me into the hospital again, so I went. But this time, thank God, I was feeling happy, I was joyful. I had the MRI, you know, and when I took it to the doctor, he even made a joke about it, you know, he said, what witchcraft is this? I said to him, there is no witchcraft. And I asked, so doctor, is it really gone? He said, calm down, we have to make sure, you know. Three or four months later, I had another MRI. And when I took the results to him, there was nothing there. The tumor was completely gone. He's living a different life now. He's been completely healed. And then we look back and we think, wow, we really didn't know God in the past. I really regret not knowing the Lord before. In the beginning, the doctor said, whenever you have a serious problem again, you can always go to church, you know. And I said to him, but I want you to come with me also, you know. Then he said that it was something very rare, that he was going to take my test to doctor's conventions, you know, to try to find the answer. More and more, I, I give my life in the hands of God, and I'm sure more blessings are coming. That's really beautiful, brethren. That is exactly what we have heard here today. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. God spoke to his heart and called him to become a sponsor. He could have called him to do something else, but he followed God's commands. Brethren, whoever doesn't follow what Jesus commands will never be friends with Jesus. And any friends who let the others down are not true friends. But if he hadn't followed Jesus, if he hadn't done anything, then he wouldn't have been a true friend, right? But Jesus is a true friend. The Bible says he is closer than a brother. You see, brothers can actually fight against one another. But in this case, the brother comes and makes amends and fights for the other and says, I am here for you. Jesus never fights with us. Jesus sticks closer than a brother. Jesus is closer. Jesus is a greater friend than a brother could ever be. But you have to follow his commands. When you do this, everything works out right. Let's go to the question and answer segment of the show. How can we leave jealously away from the relationship? I can't understand what jealousy is all about. I think it's foolish. I mean, but unfortunately, some people are really jealous about each other. It's worthless. It's nothing but evil action so that one person keeps fighting with the other, husband and wife, wife and husband. If the person is really wrong, they can be watched 24 hours a day. But when the other person takes a quick shower, they run into everything that's wrong. I mean, it's just hopeless. What matters is to trust God. Question number two, please. Dr. Suarez, I would like to understand why some people, the minute they are saved, they, uh, they quit doing drugs immediately and others will take longer and sometimes need to go to treatment centers. Because the person's faith is not really strong, my sister. 
When I had an eyesight problem 20 years ago, I prayed diligently for four months nonstop every day in the presence of God. Lord, you have declared that I was healed by the stripes of Jesus. And where's my blessing? Where's my blessing? And finally, my blessing came. If I hadn't done that, you see, I had astigmatism. It's very likely that I would be preaching to you today and saying, the Lord heals you. Why won't you believe him? But I sought God and God healed me. Jesus said, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. And for everyone who asks receives. Therefore, you have to follow God. It's up to us. We have to be even more diligent to make our call and election sure indeed. Don't keep thinking that those people in the past who served God didn't have to do that too. Those people had to be steady and fighting and struggling and working hard. And then God finally blessed them. Whoever uh, doesn't fight, whoever doesn't seek God, and says, Dr. Suarez, it's easy. All you have to do is open the Bible and pray. Yeah, sure, when you were sleeping early morning, I was there in the presence of God. Lord, I have this people I need to feed, Lord. Please give me what I need. How can I talk to them about so many different types of problems? And when we pray, anoint us. That's how God does things, brethren. And God gives us this word that truly opens the eyes of people. Some days people actually come to us and say, wow, you said everything I needed to hear, but I knew nothing about your problem, but God knows everything and he used us. Brethren, you know that you can have everything of God when God can have everything of you. The Bible says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Unless you draw near to God, he won't draw near to you. Therefore, it's up to you. You have to seek God. Of course, you don't have to do anything crazy. You just have to believe whatever God says and learn it and live your normal life. Not a sinful life, obviously. And you can be absolutely sure that God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Let's go now to the Open Your Heart segment. Dr. Soadis, I come from another denomination, and even so, I once called you a deceiver when you talked about the sponsorship. But I finally had an experience with God and started to feel the calling. I decided to sponsor my husband, who's in jail, and even though he was sentenced to the semi-open jail system, he's been kept in the prison all the time. It's been two years and a half in this struggle. With the sponsorship, we started seeing some improvement. In the end of last year, he got to spend 10 days with us. We felt very happy with this answer from God. My husband came to this unfortunate place because of his crack addiction. Dr. Soadis, I kindly ask you to pray for us. My husband is a nice, hard-working man, but this problem just ruined his dignity. Well, sister, you shouldn't be too eager for him to leave the prison. Dr. Suarez, what are you talking about? Remember, Joseph from Egypt had to spend two years in prison and he was innocent. Your husband was guilty. Joseph was innocent. But prison was just a crash course for Joseph. There, Joseph sought God. Perhaps if he leaves jail too soon, he can fall into temptation again. Therefore, he needs to take a stand and get converted. God always knows how to do the right thing at the right moment. Israel asked God for a king and God said, I am your king. He wanted to be, but they asked and God gave them a king, and Saul was a complete disgrace. Therefore, you need to wait for the Lord, believe in the Lord, and God will certainly give you the victory in the name of Jesus. Because your husband did something wrong and went to jail, pray to God so that he will be a light in the darkness and can leave prison completely recovered. Never try to rush things. Everything happens at the right time. And you can be absolutely sure that the Lord is our Father and God understands everything. It's not nice when someone is in a place like that, but nothing happens by chance. The ideal is that now he can learn and make a decision, and when he gets out of jail, he can hold his head up and decided never to go back again. Goodbye, prison. Now I belong to Jesus Christ. I will only speak the word of God and be a true blessing for mankind. Now let's pray for those who are at home. God, I intercede for those who are at home now or at the hospital in the jail or at work, wherever they are, and also those who are here, so that your power, Lord, can come down upon us and destroy the pain and suffering these people have been enduring. I join my faith with the faith of these people, and I rebuke right this moment any and every evil spirit. And I say, you devil, pick up everything that is yours and release this life right now and never come back in the name of Jesus. Amen.